Hello, welcome to everyone. In this video, this is lecture number three on nanomaterials and application. Today, I want to discuss about the characterization of nanomaterial. That includes X-ray diffraction, optical microscope, scanning electron microscopy, SEM, transmission electron microscopy, TEM, atomic core microscopy, AFM, scanning tunneling microscopy, STM. Actually, in the first lecture, we discuss about the uh, nanomaterials, their types, their characterization. In the second lecture, we discuss about the synthesis of nanomaterial, how we can prepare the nanomaterial. And in this lecture, we want to characterize that is, the properties of nanomaterial can be obtained uh, by this experiment. Okay, and uh, you can say uh, whether this material is nanomaterial or not. This can be also obtained from this characterization. Suppose such that XRD gives you the nanocrystal size, there are the uh, different crystal plane present can be obtained from the X ray diffraction and transmission electron microscope. From scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope, you can obtain the composition of this material. From AFM, the depth of the nanomaterials can be obtained. From ACM, the structure uh, formation, whether this nano pillar or nano rod or nano wire, which structures actually obtain, you can get the from the scanning electron microscope. AFM, STM are similar, but used in different for conducting material, you use scanning tunneling microscope for uh, non uh, conducting and non conductive, you can use AFM, etc. So, all the details of this uh, instrumentation, instrument which are characterized the nanomaterial will be discussed in this lecture. You can see this is the syllabus we cover up uh, part 1, part 2 in last two lecture. Today wants to cover up this part 3 that is the characterization. In upcoming session we will be cover up the optical properties and then electron transport and then application. So this will be cover up in the upcoming session. Let's start XRD. First of all, uh, we need to know why use X-ray instead of uh, UV light or optical uh, or visible light, we use X-ray. Why? Because the uh, wavelength of X-ray is comparable with the atomic size. Wavelength of X-ray is nearly 10 Armstrong and the atomic size also nearly 10 Armstrong. When the wavelength of uh, this uh, uh, X-ray and uh, uh, crystal difference, crystal planes uh, gapping, that is the interplanar spacing are comparable, then we obtain the actual information. But in case of UV or, or visible light, the wavelength is much higher and this cannot give the depth information. Suppose you have a window with this rod and the gap is like that and you have a this size of ball. So if you throw towards this window, it's always come back so you can conclude that is the rigid, but when you throw this size of ball, then it's uh, sometimes come back, sometimes transmitted. So you can conclude it that there is some rods and there is some open space. So like that, you can see here when the X-ray go through this uh, material, you will be get the actual information. But when light is uh, go through this uh, material, you does not get the actual information. You get this opaque space. Uh, suppose uh, you know that is for X-ray used for uh, image of bone because it penetrates to the uh, skin, but it cannot penetrate to the bone. Okay, so that's why we use X-ray instead of UV light or visible light. <coughs> okay, so XRD uh, actually uh, get the uh, construction interference of X-ray. Uh, suppose these are the plane uh, of crystal plane and this uh, gives uh, this uh, x-ray this is uh, the x-ray are reflected like that and there is a path difference due to this path difference they make a interference pattern and this interference pattern gives you the formula this path difference like that you can see very carefully this angle is theta so this angle is theta so this is d sin theta because this is d so this d sin theta and this d sin theta gives you the uh, total path difference between two these rays x-ray are 2 d sin theta and this is constructive when this will equal to n lambda. Lambda is the wavelength of the x-ray. 
so using this Bragg's law you can obtain this uh, information of this material like that uh, this is a sample and these are detector and this is the x-ray source so these are changes angle and you will be get this type of <coughs> spectrum that is uh, with uh, the two theta you will be get intensity high when the intensity is high that means this plane is much higher uh, this is a uh, plane that is this type of plane is not present okay so this intensity high this is plane is higher so how will we get the plane information because from two theta you will be get theta and then sine square and sine square theta you just uh, put this value to the sine theta equals to n lambda you can you can see uh, that is 2d d is uh, root under h square plus k square plus l square 2d sin theta is equals to n lambda lambda is uh, n is 1 so you can see that is the sin square theta is proportional to h square plus k square plus l square you know the main indices from solid state physics so this is the sin square theta and uh, it's proportional to that one so, so from this uh, ratio you will be obtained if this ratio is present then this is simple cubic this ratio then uh, body center cubic this ratio the face center cubic okay so from this xrt information you can easily find out which peak are represent which planes right so how many planes are present in the crystal you will be obtained if there is single crystal then only one peak are present in this graph right so multi this is multi crystal that's why these various clicks are present and another information can obtain that is uh, that is the uh, 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 and this is the actual uh, tablet form you can say that is the for primitive cell nehkl body center this is 2n for space center all even or all odd and this is okay so this is the allowed reflection this is forbidden reflection for application you can say from from the crystalline xrd you will be get the crystalline phase then determine the degree of crystallinity the plane structure all are, are, are obtained from this xrd if the peak is shifted if peak shifted somewhere then there is a homogeneous strain if peak is uh, strained that is the bordering of this peak then you can say this is a heterogeneous strain and from the cellular formula from a single peak you will be obtain the grain size you will be from the peak position you will be get the peaks which are present here uh, and the uh, from a single peak you will be obtain the grain size from the cellular formula that is the k lambda by beta cos theta equals to d k is the constant safe constant which is nearly 0 0.9 and lambda is the wavelength of incident x-ray beta is the full width at half maxima full width at half maxima means this is the height and at the uh, half height what is the width of two theta okay and um, from this relation you will be get the grain size that is the crystallinity size of this material okay and then microstrain can be obtained from this relation and dislocation density can be obtained so these are the application of the uh, excerpt now comes into the optical microscope you know optical microscope is that that is the uh, zoom out that is the image or zoom out magnification of this object okay uh, mainly there is two types of microscope optical simple microscope and compound microscope simple microscope means uh, you, you simple microscope means only one single lens which uh, amplify this image and compound microscope means uh, there is um, more image and magnify is higher. There is another types of uh, microscope stereo comparison microscope which is compared to sample inverted microscope which is starting from the below starting from the below okay. There are advantages that is this image obtained directly without no special treatment of sample and this gives a real color of image that is the important point because in, in, in upcoming slide you will be uh, see another microscope that is transmission electron microscope say scanning electron microscope but there is no real image of this sample actual real image of the sample natural image of this sample natural color of the sample can be obtained by microscope right so that's why this is very important 
and uh, adapted to all kinds of sample system from the gas liquid and solids any type of shape and any kinds of uh, formation just you get the zoom out that is the magnified image you can obtain from the optical there is limitation you cannot uh, obtain from the uh, this types of uh, uh, that is the crystalline size you cannot obtain using this microscope because this is a uh, there's a light so wavelength is uh, 4000 to 8000 Armstrong but actual length uh, of the separation is nearly 10 Armstrong so there is a imperative uh, there is a size difference so that's why this is the most important limitation of this microscope next is the scanning electron microscope that is another uh, you can use x-ray to detect the information of the nanostructure another thing is the electron electrons when moving it's a bs like a wave and electrons mass is very small that's why its wavelength also small that's why we use electron to get you use the electron to get the information of the sample single uh, scanning electron microscope is one of these instruments where you use the electron to get the information from the sample the components is like that there is an electron gun where is the electron are originated this is the source of electron then this is anode they are attracted and there are electromagnetic lens in case of light you use the lens of, uh, my, uh, of, of the glass but here since this is an electron you need to cast with the electromagnetic lens then there is a scanning coil when the scanning coil is rotated then the point of this Election or changes uh, on the sample spot and you will be obtained the information and there is important things is the backscatter electron which are is important for the information of the sample because when the electron uh, inject or probe out on the sample they are produced secondary electron, other electron, frozen electron, backscatter electron, characteristic x-ray, continuous x-ray among them only black scatter electron which gives you the information crystalline information of the sample or the actual information of the sample actually obtained from this back scatter electron you can say the depth at which the electron go through the sample and get these types of emission okay the application of uh, ACM is like that this is the image morphology it can uh, form the image uh, image compositional sum of bonding difference and molecular proofs metal and using this so this is more important and uh, the limitation is like that actually ACM when you measure the ACM you need to vacuum this environment and you need to uh, coating of the sample for non-conducting material as this is non-conducting this electron are accumulated there and they uh, reflect the further electron that's why you need to coating on the sample of the material so this is an another uh, additional step and which is <coughs> gives you the uh, cost effectiveness is um, less here okay and conducting of uh, sample conducting of sample is for metal or conducting sample beams are uh, conducts through sample and this image are black and white this is another because it cannot get the natural color of this sample required special maintenance and required trained person next uh, next is the tem transmission electron microscope this was the surface morphology and this is the inner depth that is the actual structure often in 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 this material will be often for tm uh, you can see this is the electron gun anode electromagnetic lens the sample placed here here you can see in cm the sample placed at the bottom here but in case of tm the sample placed at the middle and then the image is often here here the electron is transmitted through the sample and you can see when there is a large number uh, this is a sample grid actually on this material because for a the thick sample you cannot transmit the electron that's why you need to obtain uh, the sample uh, of the order of uh, 30 nanometer this is like 30 nanometer thick sample 
take sample you need to prepare it does not uh, obtain uh, it, it does not take a uh, thick sample okay the thickness will be like that 30 nanometer so uh, these sample are placed here and when this uh, electron passing through this uh, if there is a number density that is the mass thickness is higher uh, then this region is white color but there is no mass thickness this is dark and for moderate this is gray color okay uh, so you using this uh, uh, sample you can obtain the structure of this material and sometimes you can see they are penetrate all are uh, cannot uh, get the boundary so we use another boundary material that is uh, on the boundary of this surface uh, of this gain you will be obtain this information also okay the application you can say this uh, from this you will be get topography you can guess if, if yes, that is the composition of this material which uh, we, uh, which composition are present here you can obtain from this and uh, advantage is the powerful uh, magnification and the high quality and resolution here and the image are high quality and detail and these advantages are large and very expensive laborious to prepare this type of uh, sample so this is very because this uh, size is one millimeter the diameter of this size is one millimeter so it is difficult to handling to make the sample so this is laborious and operation analysis requires special training image are black and white this is another drawback and requires special maintenance and trained person next thing is the atomic force microscope from ACM and TM you will be get two dimensional image of the nano particle but in case of AFM you AFM and STM you get the three dimensional information of the nanoparticle that is the actual depth height of this nanoparticle can be obtained from the AFM atomic force microscope here you can see the uh, actual structure this is a sample and this is a cantilever with this tip and there is a laser source which is reflect from this when these tips are playing from here and the detector detect in the laser and information they will get the information about the surface morphology okay this is actually used for van der waals force and hooke's law uh, when this gap is like that there is force uh, happening and this d is like that when this is very much so this will be repulsive and after a attractive <coughs> so this distance is such that this becomes repulsive and the component is like that three component cantilever with trip this photodiode which detect this information laser there are three type, uh, three mode actually contact mode that is these are contact here current uh, uh, contact and go through this surface and is uh, scanned along xy plane okay so scan along xy plane. Uh, in uh, during contact mode this is contact for non contact mode there is a gap because for contact mode <laughs> the tip can break for a large uh, height and depth uh, on the surface and trapping mode is mostly used uh, where they are uh, trapped here sometimes contact sometimes not does not contact so this is recently used very much uh, from AFM you can get a three dimensional morphology and depth height profile will be obtained resolution is better than a one Armstrong advantage is for fast scanning but uh, this is not fast than HCM because <coughs> It scan along each line on the sample. Used for rough sample, fixed analysis, and 3D information is very important. Disturbance is slower than ACM, and for sub sample can change because this tip can change the sample surface. Another Three dimensional morphology can be obtained scanning turning microscope. Here, this uh, tip is like that, and there is current flow due to quantum mechanical turning. Here, actually, there is no current flow, this reflection actually gives you information of the sample. But here, this current flow from this material, so you can see 
that is the piezo tube with electrode these two are electrode and current flow from that one there is a cap and current flow from this due to quantum mechanical current okay this is the basic principle of st uh this component are three that is a scanning tip piezoelectric tube and tiling contact amplifier okay this is a main <coughs> tip piezoelectric and this uh, current amplification because this tiling uh, current is very low so you need to amplify there is two mode actually used in uh, this type of stm that is a contact high a constant height mode that is high is of the tip is constant and constant current mode that is current is constant when height <coughs> sorry when height of the tip is constant then you can get, see that is the difference this is the sample difference there is the gap change when this gap is low then current is high but when this gap is high current is low that's why the current profile will be like that high difference so this is the profile of this so for constant current that is the distance is uh, same as the current is constant and this uh, difference that is the tip height is changes like that so these two mode can use in stm application you will be get the shape size orientation information electrical information atom by atom manipulation can be made by this stm because a single uh, atom can change here you can see this uh, atom manipulation can be obtained by stm okay advantage is stm is versatile that is can use ultra high vacuum air etc Uh, gives 3D information. Lateral resolution is very expensive. Need special trainer. Extreme very high cleaning. Expensive high resolution field. Etc. Will be required. So that's it for STM. There is a uh, difference between AFM and STM. And the AFM actually moving nanoparticle size across the surface. And this is the quantum tiling effect. This makes direct contact with sample uh, for contact mode. There is no direct contact. Current pass through the tiling. quantum tiling afm resolution is better than stm uh, resolution is lower afm used both conducting non conducting but stm used for conducting sample only afm suit any environment but stm required high vacuum so that is the difference between stm and stm okay this is a question which asked in 2021 and 2022 you must uh, solve this question or you can just write down the answer of this question okay and there is another playlist for solution of this type of question you can go through the playlist so that's it for today this is all about me this is my contact detail and this is my youtube channel details go to the share it will be great from crazy related videos some mathematics like this session if you learn something from this session share this video to your friends other he or she also get benefit from the video subscribe the channel if you miss and those already subscribe thanks for subscribing press the bell icon to get notification of upcoming so take care we'll meet in the next video as soon as possible thank you